What's going on guys? It's Salvaje. So we return again with another Widowmaker VOD review. So we're coaching a, a High Diamond Low Masters Widowmaker. Uh, he told me to take a look at his gameplay and he told me to take a look at some of the mistakes that he might be making. You know, some of the bad habits that of course we can fix. Of course, we're using this video for educational purposes. And I am of course sharing with you guys what I would do in his situations, okay? Uh, I just want to point out, if you want your gameplay to be reviewed, okay? Uh, follow the you know the instructions on screen make sure that it's a 1080p video please because keep in mind when uh, I when, when I uh, render the video and when I upload it to YouTube it gets compressed so if you have like a really like a 720p video for me to review like it's gonna look really really bad when it's like in YouTube because YouTube compresses videos when it's released also make sure that it's a game where you lost or you feel like you didn't perform too well because this guy he was just popping off which is why i'm going to use this gameplay again as an example of you know what he is doing and why he is doing it and of course we're also going to talk about some fundamentals you know just some uh you know just some things that he could have done uh better and of course i have to mute the gameplay audio because he has a uh, copyrighted music in the background and obviously i don't want my channel to get a copyright strike I i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna risk it okay he's playing in masters okay that means you know, people in here have pretty good aim. They know positioning, all right? So he has to play very carefully. He, he, he doesn't want to risk getting sniped by another Widow at the beginning. So as you guys are going to see right here, he's going to be peeking little by little, right? This Zarya in the enemy team, very, very unlucky. She just she just gets hit by the Junkrat Mines. She basically just gets taken out by him. So look, this is an example of really great positioning right here. He has a view of the enemy team, and he has a view of his team as well. Okay, so... Uh, I'm going to get Epic Pen up for the next VOD review because I hadn't had a chance to download it. But um, right there, what I would have done, because, you know, we have a Mercy, okay, and you're creating space for the Mercy by being in the high ground, is I would have stayed up there and I would have hidden behind uh, the little pillar that's over here, okay? Again, I'm going to get Epic, Pe Epic Pen on the next VOD review so I can, like, you know, draw uh, circles and stuff so you guys know what I'm talking about. But I think he should have stayed on the high ground there, just hide behind the pillar, you know, if he needed some healing, he could have just jumped and then Mercy could have just flied onto him. On top of that, again, uh, one of the things that you want to do as Widowmaker, which uh, this guy doesn't really do in this little team fight right here, is uh, create a lot of space for Mercy, okay? Because uh, right now, Mercy, she only has the left. She has the backside, which of course he can fly to you, which is really good. But she doesn't have any high ground. So if the Mercy gets jumped at, if the Reinhardt keeps charging, all right, she's not going to be able to fly to you to the high ground for protection. So that's something that you have to keep in mind at the higher levels of play, where teamwork is honestly very, very essential. He takes out the McCree. Oh, and I just want to point out, you know, I'm not saying he had bad positioning right there. He had really, really good positioning. However, I'm also, I, I want to point out, you know, another possibility, another thing that he could have done that, of course, would have been just as fine. Okay. At the same time, keep in mind, the high ground is also very dangerous for him. You know, he's going in Masters. People have good aim here. They have a Soldier. They have a McCree. Okay, you know, obviously he doesn't want to risk it as much. But I think he would have been able to, you know, just easily, um, you know, e easily stay alive up there, you know. Uh, he, like, he would have been in the high ground. He would have been a threat for the enemy team. Oh, that looks so cool. And uh, on top of that, he would have been able to uh, create space for Mercy, get healed by Mercy. And, of course, his team would have been able to add pressure. Okay, the enemy team... Uh, if he would have been in the high ground, the enemy team would have had to focus on two different, like, you know, they would have had to focus over here, and they would have had to focus over here, right? So their focus would be split, which means that they will be more vulnerable. And if he's over here, like, they only have to focus on one line of sight. So then that means the enemy team isn't as vulnerable. Uh, but of course, again, keep in mind, you know, we're using this for educational purposes. I'm not saying that, you know, he's doing things wrong. Like the young man told me, you know, he, he wants me to take a look at some of the mistakes that he did and... You know, some uh, how he could have played better. Okay, so he, he wanted me to take a look at his mistakes. You know, this is just a mistake. I definitely don't care what anybody says. He's not using the healing button. All right, like I, I get super triggered. All right, when I'm playing healer and people don't ask for healing with the healing button. All right, like, I get it. I'm a healer. I'm supposed to know when everyone needs healing. I get that. All right, but at the same time, you know, being at low health with Widowmaker is a threat. Like, he's at 145 health. All this soldier needs to do is just throw a freaking Helix rocket, get a direct hit, and just spray her a couple of times, and that's it. He wouldn't even be able to react, okay? Make sure that if you need healing with Widowmaker that you ask for it. This guy's in Masters also. He's also on voice comms as well, which is, by the way, really, really good. Make sure that you're in voice comms with Widowmaker so that you can call out when targets are weak. Okay, so, um, so right here, 
Okay, uh, this is also another example of uh, bad positioning. Okay, so right there, you know, in this fight, he should have been above, on the high ground, on the little, on the second floor of the coffee shop, because basically he had the pillars for protection, and on top of all that, he could have also backed away and then just shoot the enemies that are all the way over here. Okay, so this was honestly, you know, kind of a mistake, something he could have done better. On top of all that, by being in the high ground, again, you're creating space for your Mercy to fly to. She could have easily fly to you for healing, and then he could have fly back to the Reinhardt. If the enemy Reinhardt is going to Earth Shatter, and she has good awareness, she knows this, so she's going to fly back to the high ground to you. Sometimes playing Widowmaker is also playing... Uh, around your mercy as well, right? Because you want to protect your mercy a lot. In Overwatch League, you know, they do that a lot. He calls out that the Zarya is one right there, which is really good. Okay, guys, post commentary Salvaje here pointing out another small mistake that he made throughout this gameplay. Um, right here in this clip, right, his team is about to do a ton of damage to the enemy team, right? So instead of throwing the Venom Mine to where your team is going to be fighting the enemy team, instead what he should have done is he should have placed the Venom Mine around him, okay? When it comes down to the Venom Mine, if your team is going to be doing massive damage, if your team is winning the fight, if they have the advantage, you shouldn't use the Venom Mine aggressively, you should use it defensively. He should have placed the Venom Mine around him because like that, if he would have gone and jumped, guess what would have happened? The person that would have jumped in would have gotten uh, sort of, what's his thing called? Um, intoxicated by the Venom Mine. And of course, he would have had a higher chance of eliminating the person that was, of course, going to jump him. Remember, my friends, Venom Mine placement is very, very important. And you want to make sure that you know how to use the Venom Mine. And of course, this is a perfect mistake that we can point out. And of course, that we can all learn from. Okay, so th this is also a really, really good thing. Um, that happened in this gameplay, okay? And honestly, I think this is like one of his last mistakes uh, Or one of his last mistakes. So Right here the team fight is gonna take place over here, right where the payload is Okay, and something that he's doing is he's gonna stay back here because he has an escape route and he sort of has like better protection But that was kind of a mistake what he should have done is he should have been up here on the ca on the cafe shop wait up He should have been over here on this area right here Okay, because, you know, if you have bad positioning on one team fight with Widowmaker, right, you can definitely lose the point. And this is this is actually the reason why he was able, why he ended up losing the point. You know, it's something that I tell my friends all the time when I'm playing Widowmaker. Guys, we lost the match because I was underperforming. I didn't have good positioning or I didn't get the exact pace that I needed to get for us to win that match. You know, that's something that I do a lot when I'm playing with my boys. So right there, like the entire enemy team is like all the way on the right side, right? And uh, he's just not doing anything there. You know, he's just being useless with Widow. So he sees the soldier. You know, he thinks that the soldier is going to go, uh, you know, to his team. Okay. And, uh, you know, he basically just stays standing still. But that mistake is going to cost him. Because since he just stayed there on that position. All right. The soldier basically knew, oh, shit. Like, this Widowmaker isn't moving. Which means it's a perfect opportunity. So if a soldier spots you, specifically at the higher levels of play. If a soldier spots you. You know, if a McCree spots you and, you know, they get away from positioning, like they get away from your line of sight, that's your opportunity to switch positions. Because let's say the enemy team has a Widow, the soldier would have seen you. He would have said, hey, Widow, you know, Widowmaker, the enemy Widowmaker is on this spot. All right. But then you would have switched spots. OK, because the soldier, of course, got away from your line of sight. And then the Widowmaker would have tried to snipe at the previous spot that you were on. And then you're going to be able to outplay her. OK, so that was a mistake right there that cost him the match. We're going to take a look at that again. OK. Because um, this was a really, really good uh, mistake that we can all learn from. Uh, he shoots the Bridget. You know, Bridget isn't as big of a threat, I guess, at the range that she was at. So, see, Soldier gets away. So, right there would have been a perfect opportunity to for him to would have gone to the second high ground of the coffee shop area. But, of course, he wasn't able to do that. He gets taken out. Uh, so, right here, right? Uh, you guys can't hear it because I muted the gameplay because I don't want, you know, to put copyrighted music on the VOD review. Um, but right here, oh, and make sure that when you send me a VOD review, it doesn't have any music on it, please. But, um, uh, right here, he just says soldier, right? Um, he didn't say soldier behind, he just said soldier, right? And, you know, the enemy team, I, I mean, his team was basically just, like, supposed to guess where the soldier was. So keep in mind, guys, when you're doing callouts, you want to say them as fast as possible, but as precise as possible. I'm going to give you guys a tip that I do with Widowmaker. Let's say, um, you know, I have a mercy on my team. Okay, and I'm, pl I'm playing a payload game mode. 
okay uh, let's say that the mercy is like in front of the payload and I'm on the high ground okay I need healing guess what I get next to the payload if I can and I say hey mercy I need healing I'm in the back of the payload so obviously mercy is going to know where the payload is and okay you say back of the payload so she's just gonna fly back to you and uh, you know get your position immediately because if you're like moving around all the time and then you're just asking for healing and you're just not letting your healer know where you're at they're gonna be confused but if you're in the objective like everybody knows where the objective is specifically the healers okay so if you say hey listen I'm to the left side of the objective bam they're gonna be able to access you for more healing because of course staying alive with Widowmaker is something that's very very important so that's another tip that we can learn from uh, from watching this uh, bot review um, let's actually just take a look at uh, this upcoming fight right here we're gonna fast forward a little bit okay so uh, with Widowmaker I did a VOD review on my own gameplay a long time ago it was a game that I lost um, I was I was doing a six stack my team just kept dying over and over again but I was able to stay alive it's called staying alive with Widowmaker that's the name of the VOD review if you guys want to check it out but look uh, right here this is a lost fight all right this is a 100% lost fight with Widowmaker you have to know when your team loses the fight and when your team loses the fight you gotta leave okay now this tip might sound like common sense to you guys but it's not right like you know there's people out there that don't know this like for example my friend Javier he just recently got overwatch every time we lose a team fight he still stays in the point fighting as Genji okay so I told him yesterday dude Genji's very mobile if you see that a lot of your teammates are dying you fall back because the last thing that you want to do is die and then give the enemy team all charge and basically we all have to wait for you to regroup okay so keep in mind guys specifically at the masters level like if he would have died here in this in this encounter his team would have been in a very very bad positioning because he would have been have been able to of course add the pressure that he's adding now of course he has a mercy on him you know he's able to land some accurate shots okay that definitely helps him out a lot but remember guys you have to know when you need to back away when you need to uh fight okay look i want to show you guys something that he did real quick uh that i do a lot with widowmaker and i don't see you know some widowmakers do okay he shot the mccree the mccree was like around 20 health or so right so instead of being flashy instead of trying to be a cool widowmaker oh i'm gonna i'm just gonna snipe you i'm just gonna scope you all right he sprayed down the mccree so if i'm fighting an enemy widowmaker if i'm fighting a hanzo medium range uh short range and they're like at 10 health i just spray them down with the smg guys because the damage that the smg provides even at medium ranges can easily just kill a person that's at 10 health instead of you just you know trying your hardest to just get a scope shot okay you have to know when to use the smg when to use the scope okay because sometimes the smg is viable even at medium range if someone is like very very weak okay let's take a look at this example right here not the greatest positioning you know he should have been on this position that he's going to go to right now this position right here he should have been over here because right here he can use the left side for cover and of course he's also protected but I guess you could say a mistake that he did in this gameplay is he didn't take the actual like the best position in you know in Hollywood uh, point two, which is you know all the way back there where the little you know bridge is at uh, where all of the Overwatch League players go to. Okay, so right here he's fighting a Bridget. Okay, uh, a basic fundamental of fighting Bridget when she's swinging you know her dick swinging weapon, make sure that you try your best to go for a headshot okay because that's when she's going to be the most vulnerable at and a lot of bridges just get really really uh concentrated and brawling so look his positioning like i said right so, so his positioning isn't bad okay but he could have he could be in a way better position like all the way back there so why is that right well if the mercy needs to escape instead of going to that high ground where he where, you know where you are at she can go to the farther high ground okay and on top of that she can also just keep flying like constantly like that she's of course harder to hit but of course it's masters you know it's masters and people have better aim in here so a mercy that's constantly flying around gets killed but again i'm pointing that out i want to say that because keep in mind guys we're also using this video as an opportunity to learn a uh, way to make it when it comes down to the lower levels of play okay he activates Infrasight here, okay? Look, 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 this is so good. Like, this guy was just popping off. His positioning is great right here. He's doing something that I like to do with Widowmaker a lot from time to time. He's just spawn camping them. Like, you know, with Widowmaker, guys, you have to have awareness. You have to know what your team is doing, you know, if your team is doing the right thing and all that stuff. So right there, he had awareness. He saw, my team is just holding down the choke, so this is a perfect opportunity for me to get some easy spawn kills. He takes out the Bridget. All right, he takes out the Bridget again, and he takes out this Widow too. But look at the health of the Widow. All right, so he has Infrasight. He knows where this Widowmaker is, but yet he's still going to try and snipe her. Don't do that. 
Don't do that. I always respect the enemy Widowmakers. Okay, so right there, he could have easily just submachine gunned that Widowmaker and just easily taken her out, okay? He ended up, you know, coming out on top. You know, he was having a really good game. His aim was on point. But again, you know, so any Widowmakers, you know, of uh, any lower ranks... Guys, if the Widowmaker is like a 10 health, like, you know, that enemy Widowmaker was, just spray her. Like, medium range, short range, just spray her. You're gonna be able to kill her way before she's able to kill you. Okay, um, later on in this clip, in this gameplay, you know, he commits a very, uh, a very bad mistake. You know, just, uh, just a simple fundamental of Widowmaker that a lot of players sometimes don't execute on, I including me. If you guys saw the previous VOD review also, you guys know that I said that you shouldn't really be moving much with Widowmaker. Okay, 14 minutes so far. You shouldn't really be moving much with Widowmaker uh, when you're shooting. Uh, keep in mind, this guy does move, uh, you know, from time to time. Okay, but it's because his shots are, of course, very, very accurate. However, the reason why I brought that up is because I want you guys to take a look at this right here. This Reinhardt in our team is going to Earth Shatter. Okay, so right there, you know, he, he needs to have awareness, right? He needs to know, okay, so my team just immobilized the entire enemy team. I'm in a completely safe position. So right there, you know, he all he needs to do is just stand still, right? And then just take his time with his shots. Look, if we take a look at his charged shots, right? Like he's not even charging them up to 100, as you guys can see, right? So that's just a fundamental of Widowmaker, you know, that, you know, we make a lot of mistakes on. You know, I make a lot of mistakes. Other Widows make a lot of mistakes. Sometimes they just panic, all right? And they don't charge up their shots. He should have taken his time, charged up his shots, and every time he was going to go for a lethal shot, just stay standing still, just for like half a second, all right, and then just shoot. So in the Overwatch University subreddit, I gave this guy, you know, a Widowmaker tip. He said he was missing too many shots, and I told him, dude, all you need to do is just stand still when you're going for a killing blow. Let me explain myself. What I mean by standing still is, you know, like, I don't mean just stay in one position and just aim and then just never fucking move, all right? What I mean is... You're going to aim, and when you're going to shoot, all right, you're going to be standing still so your shot is as accurate as possible. I learned it from Overwatch League. Again, if you don't believe me, watch Overwatch League. Watch the, watch the top 500 Widows, okay? After you shoot, obviously you want to move, all right? Widowmaker is a very mobile hero. If you're not playing her in a very mobile way, you're, 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 you're kind of like not really using her to the fullest potential, okay? So uh, right here, he sees a Doomfist. But, you know, he just backs away way too, uh, way too slow. So look, right here... He should have known, you know, he should have had awareness. All right, this is just a small mistake that he did. Okay, so right here, right, like his team is kind of getting gangbanged. You know, he doesn't really have the advantage. You know, I would have just grappled on, you know, grappled away uh, from him. Okay, you know, re reason for that is, is because look, like his team is getting steamrolled. You know, the Doomfist jumps on you. And when the Doomfist jumps on you with Widow, all you have to do is just grapple away, go to a safe position, try to take him out from there. But it was basically, of course, uh, too late. I went off fast forward to um, this little clip right here. This is a perfect example of taking a centered shot, of taking a shot that, this is an easy shot. The enemy Widowmaker doesn't know where we're at. So all he needs to do is just stay here, all right? And then just, j just stand still, all right? Just stand still, just take your time, and then just aim at the head and then shoot. Okay, obviously you don't wanna take 25 years doing that. But the point is, this was an easy shot and he missed two of them, as you guys can clearly see right there. And that gets him killed, okay? So the reason why he wasn't able to finish off the enemy Widow is because he was just moving too much, guys. All right? You can't shoot and move too much. It's just not going to work. You're just not going to be as accurate, okay? And, of course, we have to keep that in mind. I, I, I just want to say, again, dude, like, I'm not hating on this dude. Like, I'm just, you know, telling you guys, you know, some of the basic mistakes that he might be committing. He has 64% scope accuracy. The, guys know, the guy knows how to aim. Like I said, he's a really good player. All right, even though he's making these small mistakes, it doesn't matter because his team is just really, really good. You know, his team is compensating for his mistakes. But keep in mind, the difference between a Grandmaster and a Master's player is that the Master's player, I mean, uh, the Master's player is making more mistakes than the Grandmaster's. Okay, the Grandmaster player can capitalize on those little mistakes uh, that you're uh, making. Look, this this clip is so good. I want, I, look guys, let's take a look at this uh, Widow here, at uh, this Widow duel here. He sees her. When he grapples, he jumps, and then as he's going to take the blow, as you guys can clearly see on there, he's not moving as much. Okay, like I said, this guy has a really good aim, so he doesn't have to take a ton of uh, centered shots. All right, but still, if you're at the lower ranks, you know, you need to improve that aim. 
you know, make sure that you're taking centered shots. Okay, so right here, he sees the Doomfist, he finishes them off with the SMG. This is why this guy is really great at Widow. Like, he knows the difference between when to use the SMG, all right, and when to not use the SMG. Okay, so this is just, you know, th this was just a basic mi mi mistake right there. You know, I, I would have gotten killed by that Hanzo as well. You know, I, I wasn't thinking about the Hanzo. Keep in mind, when, when you're playing Widow, you want to think about the threats. You want to think about the Hanzos. All right, you want to think about the enemy Widows. You want to think about the Genjis. You want to think about the Winstons. Okay, we're going to move back into this fight right here. Okay, so I believe this is where he gets taken out by Hanzo. No, he doesn't take it. He doesn't get taken. Oh, yeah, he does. So look, right here, right? He's dueling this Hanzo. He just gets taken out. We're gonna we're gonna take a look at that again. All right. So look, right here, this was an easy shot. He was just moving way too much. He wasn't able to take off the Hanzo. He landed one shot on the Hanzo. So th look, my my critical tips, my three critical tips against defense hero video will be out very soon. And this is one of my critical tips, one of the fundamentals now when it comes down to Widow v Hanzo combat. In the past, Hanzo wasn't as mobile. And he didn't have as much damage output as he has now. Of course, he had scatter arrow, but sometimes that was an unreliable technique. So look, now the new way to fight Hanzo, if specifically at close range, you land one shot on him, and then you got to use the grapple. So right here, he should have repositioned himself, maybe gone to the high ground, maybe done a grapple shot in the air, and take him out uh, when he was in the air. Okay, reason for that is, it's because, you know, Hanzo just has a ton of damage right now with those storm arrows. They're a huge threat. You know, storm arrows are just really, really good. Takes out the Widow here with a grapple shot. Perfect example. Okay, perfect example of, uh, you know, using your environment to your advantage. Okay, obviously, you know, that's that's what uh, he's doing right there. So, you know, there really isn't anything to point out. He takes out this Hanzo. Funny story, actually. The people in the enemy team, they actually tell him he has an aimbot. Because he's beasting. He's popping off. He's a beast. He knows what he's doing. His positioning is great. His aiming is great. It's just these small little mistakes that are holding him back from reaching the higher ranks. And honestly, that's just one of the reasons why I just don't commit to, to a ranked in Overwatch. You know what I mean? Because I know like, if you want to reach top 500, if you want to reach Grandmaster, you're just going to have to commit yourself to the game. All right, And you're going to have to commit yourself to that character like as much as possible. Like I'd rather play Widowmaker at a Master's level okay, than playing Widowmaker at a Grandmaster's level. Because the player at Grandmaster's level, it's going to take a lot of commitment, you know, from me. You know what I mean? All right, so wait up now. I want to, okay, so I want to take a look at this encounter real quick, right? So he takes out the Mercy. He takes out the Widow. He sees the Doomfist. He doesn't have the Grapple. He can't really do anything. What do you do in a situation like that? You you, you can't do shit. All right, I, you, you can't do anything. So that was just, you know, the Doomfist just had, you know, some pretty good timing on there. You know, you, you just can't do anything. He, he could have dropped down, asked for healing. It wouldn't have mattered, though. Okay, so now we, we're going to take a look at the attacking round. Again, guys, make sure that your gameplay is 1080p. Because if it is in 1080p, the, the VOD isn't going to look as sharp, as great on YouTube. We're going to take a look at uh, this guy's positioning and attack. Because honestly, it, 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 it's just great. Alright, uh, I want to talk about an aspect of Widowmaker. 22 minutes, okay, that's not that bad. I want to talk about a really good aspect when it comes down to Widowmaker. On attacking so he's gonna take out the Hanzo all right and uh, let's talk about that right so it, when you're attacking with Widowmaker specifically in game modes like Hollywood and game modes like hybrid if you get one pick you can just steamroll the first point right because the it's gonna be a 6v5 and if you can stay alive and you just just even do damage if you can get one pick specifically at the lower ranks if you can get one pick all right and then you know your team is able to actually do their job and then you just damage heroes like that's it you know you're doing really really well okay you don't have to be like this guy dark widow that he's, he's constantly popping off constantly getting so many headshots like look at that he takes out the widow it's a it's a 4v6 now it's a 4v6 what is the enemy team going to do they're going to lose this point that's what they're going to do okay a uh, reinhardt the, the enemy reinhardt takes out the bridget but it doesn't matter you know he, he gets another pick right there you know so his team is just popping off all right you know he's doing his work he got three picks in that point he took out half the enemy team Okay, so that was a really, really good play by him. Uh, let's take a look at his positioning. You know, his positioning, very, very great. Uh, as you guys can see right here, he takes a look. He's covered from here. He can take a look at his team. He can take a look at the enemy team. Now, the right thing to do, you know, the small mistake that he, that he made here, it doesn't matter, though, because, again, his teammates were able to capitalize on his small mistake and take the point, all right, because, you know, they were able to get picks, but... Um, let's say that you're at a lower level, like like gold, for example, where sometimes getting picked with Widowmaker don't matter. So what he should have done is he shouldn't have risked it. He should have gone to the high ground, okay, where the railings are at. 
Okay, like that, he could have shot people that come from, you know, that angle over there. So that's just some bad positioning, you know, with a way to make it right there. Just a small mistake. It didn't matter, though, because, again, his teammate capitalized on that mistake. Uh, we're going to be uh, fast-forwarding here. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at the second fight. He's behind the Reinhardt barrier. And I just want to point something out, right? If you see an enemy widow behind the Reinhardt barrier and you're not behind the barrier yourself, just run away. Okay? Uh, he, he was shooting at the enemy widow behind the Reinhardt barrier, but then he realized, holy shit, that's something that I should not do. Okay? And, of course, he stopped doing it. I got a scratch in my eye. We're taking a look at this fight right here. All right? He's shooting the Ana. As you guys saw, he missed a couple of shots, right? He missed a couple of shots at the beginning on that Ana. Why? Because he was moving a lot. You know, basic Widowmaker fundamentals. If you can take an easy shot, if you can take a shot where, like, you can definitely 100% stay stationary, which is, by the way, like, 85% of the time when you're taking an easy shot, you should be taking a center shot, you should be standing still, you should be going for the final blow. Okay, but if you can take a, an easy shot, if you can take a centered shot, in other words, standing still, you know, knowing you're 100% going to land a shot, do it. And, of course, you have to have awareness with Widowmaker, you know. It just comes by playing her, guys. You know, that's something that I can't teach. Like, again, you know, when I go for the killing blow with Widow, you know, I make sure that I'm standing still. But sometimes I don't do it because sometimes, you know, I don't need to do it. Look, 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 look. ADAD spamming. You know, that's also that a lot of people ask from time to time. He's just going to stay still. He's going to keep the crosshair between her head and he's just going to shoot. I actually learned that tip from a Widowmaker player called Skyline. He used to make a lot of great guides on YouTube. I have no idea where he is now. But yeah, I learned that tip from uh, Skyline's Widowmaker guide a long ass time ago. This is a perfect example of positioning. Okay, so Hanzo, right? Close range, Storm Arrows, dangerous. Storm Arrows are dangerous. You don't fight Hanzos at close range anymore. It's just something that you can't do anymore. At the same time, however, he was distracting the enemy Hanzo, and the enemy Hanzo didn't do shit. All right, his team was able to take the point because the enemy Hanzo was distracted on him. So that's a pretty good job on uh, his part. I hope you guys enjoyed the VOD review. If you enjoyed it, drop a like, subscribe to join the Survival Hotel. Uh, keep in mind, we're not hating on this dude. All right, we're just learning from his mistakes. I'm learning from him. I learned a lot from watching his gameplay. If you guys want me to coach your gameplay, uh, leave me a YouTube link in the comment sections below. All right, or DM it to me on Instagram or tweet it at me. Make sure that the gameplay is 1080p, please. And make sure that it's a game where you either got defeated or, of course, where you feel you didn't perform as well. If you guys enjoyed the video, drop a like, subscribe, join the Swag Cartel, and see you guys on the next one. Peace.